So yes, uh, it's always a blessing to be able to come. I love coming to visit uh, here at May every year. I threatened in Sunday school on like COVID, I'll be back next year. Uh, so that's, that could be a threat or a promise or a, you know, it, how, how are we to uh, take that? But it's, uh, I, I love being able to come and share what God is doing, but also to experience your congregation. Uh, it's just a blessing uh, to see the love and the, the, the care that you have for one another as a family. Uh, that's a, a rare and precious commodity in the world today where there are so many people who are isolated and lonely and broken. Uh, you are truly a vessel of the Lord's blessing. And that's really kind of uh, how I want to start this morning by talking about how God is a God that we trust a uh, God who knows how to bless his children, and that we can trust in that. And not only do we uh, trust in the Lord alone, but also his people, his family that we are part of, that we have a privilege of being part of. So uh, with that, I'm going to read from Psalm 146, which is going to uh, kind of uh, be the uh, preface uh, for my presentation. And uh, this is a psalm that reminds us of, to trust the Lord. It says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us work, uh, pray to the Lord as we begin. Lord, thank you for being the God who watches over the needy. Thank you for being the God who knows how to lift up those who are bowed down. Thank you for being the God that we can stake our life on. In a changing world where there's so much chaos and so much brokenness, so much loneliness. Thank you, O oh Lord, for calling us to be part of your family, for inviting us through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that we might call this home. Thank you for the, how we can belong to you and to one another. And so we ask your blessing upon us as we grow in that knowledge and as we grow in our ability to reach out and to be a blessing to others. Thank you for blessing us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord indeed knows how to care for the needy. He knows how to lift up those who are bowed down. That's, a, that's a, really the, the key verse uh, that I want to focus on uh, this morning. Verse 8 of Psalm 146. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down because that is the God that we serve and the God that we depend on. And, and, and I really appreciate how the beginning of the psalm says, don't put your trust in princes. I think we all know uh, that uh, the government's going to let us down <laughs> Uh, businesses, bank accounts, everything that this world has as a foundation or a source of hope and strength eventually is going to wear out and break down. That's just the way the world is. But God is the eternal God. He is the maker of all things. He is the one who sustains all things, and he is faithful forever. We can always count on that. We can stake our life on that. And that's the promise that we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the God who loves us so much, who gave us his own son, so that we might have eternal life in him. And so that's uh, how I want to begin by, in our discussion about what's God, what God is doing in the world today. All right, uh, so you uh, can go ahead and get the uh, slideshow started uh, uh, for my presentation. This is uh, an update that I do every year. Uh, what in the world is God doing? And I, and I try to keep it as updated as possible with the uh, current events of, of what's been going on. And uh, I always start with uh, our annual theme. And this year's theme is Reimagine Missions. There we go. 
And, uh, and, and this uh, coming from the General Conference uh, for Churches of God or Denomination, uh, we had an international gathering just over a month ago in Finley, uh, our triennial sessions. Every three years we get, gather together representatives from all around the U.S. and from around the world. We gather in Finley, and uh, this year it was to reimagine because we're recognizing that things like pandemics and, and all the crazy things that are happening in the world force us to adapt uh, how we do things, how we engage in ministry. We don't change the gospel because the gospel doesn't change, but we do change how we do things in ministry, simply because the world's changing around us. We need to be able to rethink and reimagine our strategies. And specifically with missions, we're doing that in global reach. Uh, the name change is an interesting uh, a part of that uh, from six years ago, uh, but we've been changing even more since then. And uh, so next slide, Jeff. Uh, these are some of the things that have been going on that really are uh, changing things up for us. And so first of all, I wanna focus on the fact that we have 10 international field leaders. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal because for the first time in Churches of God history of missions, all of our international fields are now being supervised by local leaders. That's huge, which means the missionaries have worked themselves out of a job and now God has raised up leaders from that field to have the spiritual leadership and, and ability to watch over that entire ministry. That's been true in India and Bangladesh, which are our largest fields, and now it's true in Haiti, which is the last of the fields uh, to be headed by four, uh, American missionaries, and now it's being headed by uh, Haitian leaders. And so it's exciting to see what God is doing uh, in all these fields. However, this does create some issues for us because, you know, when you have American missionaries living abroad, say in Haiti, uh, they're able to send lots of information back, you know, so there's a good communication stream. Uh, they speak the English, of course, and, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's great to connect with them like that. That communication is very uh, difficult now with international field leaders, many of whom don't speak English. So you can imagine, you know, if you put yourself in my shoes, uh, you know, connecting with, with guys in Brazil who speak only Portuguese. I don't speak very much besides thank you in Portuguese. <laughs> and, and I always try to get thank you, good morning, and God bless you. Those are the three phrases I like to learn in every language. And that doesn't go very far. Uh, I can get by in Spanish a little bit, and I'm learning uh, some Creole to get by in Creole or in Haiti, and so it's it's kind of a challenge for me, and that's okay. I, I can I can take that, uh, but the issue with communications and with financial uh, connections uh, it gets kind of sticky sometimes, and and we have to work through all sorts of different expectations and and ways that we do things, and so again. This is one of the things that we are rethinking as a result of the changes that have happened. Uh, and the fact that we have these 10 godly leaders, actually nine, I'll tell you about uh, why it's not 10 in a little bit. And so we're trying to uh, help to raise support for them uh, because a lot of them are pastors or work other jobs in addition to having this uh, responsibility for their field. And so we're seeking to raise support to help them and just provide a stipend for them uh, to bless them in their in their leadership. And so that, again, is one of those issues that uh, we're trying to provide the communications, we're trying to provide opportunity for people to get to know them, and uh, it's just exciting what God is doing. So one of the ways we do that is through Giving Tuesday, which is the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, November 29th this year. And uh, we do this as a national campaign to raise support for these field leaders. The second mega theme that I want to uh, focus on, and these are themes that are going across the board for Global Reach, is emphasis on leadership development. Uh, the Churches of God vision for uh, 2025, which is our 200th anniversary as a denomination, is to see thousands of spiritually empowered leaders raised up and deployed throughout the world. That's not just here in the U.S., but around the world as well. And so our part in Global Reach is to really double down on leadership, training, and development. And uh, we're doing this 
in conjunction with Weinbrenner's Theological Seminary in Finley, uh, that has developed online uh, resources for uh, taking pastoral and leadership training uh, anywhere around the world. So any of you can sign up to Weinbrenner without ever having to leave your home, and you can take classes. And that's also true around the world. Uh, they are providing face-to-face uh, -face teaching uh, in Kenya, and so that's one of the places that we have as an opportunity for people to go and to experience, and Pastor Kevin is more than welcome to uh, go and, and teach a class. So if you want to get rid of him for a week or two, that's a great way to do it. I'll sign him so, <laughs> You'll have to verify that with Gary. So, and that's, a, that's a, an opportunity that we have for uh, pastors, and Arnie Kaufman from Worcester Church uh, was the latest to do this. And it's just a blessing to be able to pour into uh, the lives of pastors and leaders in Kenya. And it's happening in, in Haiti uh, remotely because we're not able to really travel there at all. Uh, but we can provide the online training. So that's, that's an, uh, a blessing to be able to do that. We're looking also at vocational training center in, in Bangladesh, uh, which is a largest field. Then we also have Global Reach Partnerships, and this is a program that we've started to help churches uh, here in the U.S. that are investing significantly into one or two uh, particular fields to learn some of the ropes of you know, the challenges as well as the opportunities with financial relationships. As you can imagine, uh, the way the world works uh, is that you know, we as Americans are seen as giant dollar signs. Okay, you may not feel wealthy, but you are. You're crazy rich compared to uh, the vast majority of people around the world. And so as they are getting into relationship with us, you can imagine some of the expectations that are gonna be there. Well, you know, we don't have anything, but you have all this. We need some of that. And it can feel really good in, in our minds to be in that position, to be the hero to swoop in with all of our money and all of our stuff and say, here you go, God bless you. And it feels really good. The problem with that is that when people start to relate on the basis of money, the relationships always fail. Money is a horrible basis for a relationship. It's true in families here in the US when people fight over inheritance, and it's true around the world when we get into that kind of road very unequal relationship, and if that's the only thing going on, it's not going to work. And so Global Reach Partnership uh, Initiative, I'm calling it, is something that's just to help churches uh, learn the, some of the ropes of what it means to be in relationship with each other. And we just had one in July, uh, right after general conference sessions, and we had representatives from India and Bangladesh and Haiti there in the meeting. And it was a great opportunity to just share together. What does this look like? What is this relationship? Uh, how, how's it going to work? And, and it was a blessing to be part of that. So we invite churches like you uh, to be uh, in the Global Reach Partnership. And finally, uh, the last mega theme is uh, because of the pandemic and our inability to travel and connect with each other, we thought, how are we going to do this? And thank God for uh, Zoom because uh, that has enabled us to have uh, quarterly gatherings uh, of bringing together people from around the world in one hour or two uh, to be able to share what's going on in their life, in their ministry, how people can be in prayer with each other. Audience members from anywhere can watch that and be part of the chat and get to know each other and ask questions. It's a great opportunity. Uh, in one evening to find out what's going on in India and Bangladesh and Haiti and Latin America. It's, it's really unique, and I encourage you to uh, be part of that if you like that kind of uh, first-hand experience. So those are some of the mega themes of what's going on. Uh, the next slide has a reminder to us of some of the lessons from Psalm 146. I've already talked about these, but again, we recognize that we are God's servants, uh, bless, seeking to bless others. We want everyone to understand, uh, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are not the hero. We don't want them to look to us to be their provider, because just as you sang a little bit ago, God is Jireh. God is provider. He is the one who is caring for their needs. 
and can be trusted and relied on in every circumstance. We are his vessel. And that's true for the local church as well as for global reach. We have been blessed by God to pour into the lives of others. So we are vessels of his grace. But he is the one who is the ultimate giver. He is the ultimate provider, not us. So that is uh, really the key point that I want to uh, remind people about as we think about everything that is going on in global reach, that he is the one that he is, uh, who is the true provider. We are his vessel. So with that, let's take a look at Mexico. Okay. This is uh, one of the fields that we've been involved with uh, for, since 2012, so it's not a terribly long relationship, only 10 years uh, since Church of God has been involved. And um, I had to change that number from three churches to two churches because this past, just a few months ago, we lost one of our three churches. And it was a, it was a real gut punch because that church was pastored by our leader <laughs> for the mission and that and not only was he the leader he was also the lawyer who was helping get our government registration put together in order to purchase property i mean one bad thing after another and, and i wish i could say oh it's all, everything is wonderful and good news but i can't always do that uh, this is reality and just like we have ups and downs here and in, in our own situations so do our mission fields and, and mexico is definitely in the midst of a, uh, I would call it a crisis. Our Lat Latina directors, uh, Caleb and Christina Acosta, uh, who oversee all of our Latino ministries, uh, Caleb's gonna be going down, I think with, within a week, uh, to find out what's going on in Mexico to, to provide some leadership and guidance there. Our next uh, slide there has a few uh, prayer points that you can be in prayer about. So first of all, obviously, their spiritual warfare. The Acostas tell me that in all of our fields, Mexico seems to be the place where the most spiritual warfare is happening. And Kelly uh, has been there, Kevin, and, he, and when you go back, you'll see that again. And, and that's that's a reality that, that isn't always obvious uh, wherever we go in the world, but it is definitely obvious in Mexico. Uh, also, pray about the property for the Dothu Church. I'm so thankful for your patience and your generosity in helping to provide for that. Uh, because of the situation with the government paperwork and everything, that's kind of an, an unknown point right now. So definitely uh, be in prayer about that. Pray for improve, improved communication. As I've already mentioned, communication is always one of those struggles that we have, connecting with uh, people from around the world and other cultures. And finally, pray for a new field leader. Uh, there's a likely uh, pastor in New Mexico City who will be the field leader, but that's not definite at this point. But pray for the leadership and the uh, coordination. Pray for the Acostas as they help to navigate that. Any questions about Mexico before I move on? I, I don't want to skip over things too quickly. I like interaction. But I will do all the talking here if you want me to. So. Okay. All right, let's go to Kenya. And... Uh, and, and I know uh, a number of you have been uh, to Kenya with me and that it's been a blessing. Anybody beyond the, the, the team of, I uh, see, <laughs> just like the five of us here. Uh, John oh, John Shaw. Yeah, so the gang's all here, almost. Except for so, Yeah, so it's uh, really neat to uh, be able to have a little mini reunion of, of the Kenya team. And uh, things have been going on really well in Kenya. And so I'm so thankful that I can report that. Um, we've been involved, uh, good grief, 14 years now. It uh, seems like it's a lot less than that. But uh, Kenya has been one of those uh, bright places of what God is doing. And the uh, next slide has a picture of our uh, leader, Pastor Joseph Maura. Uh, and he's been the leader of the, the Kenya field uh, since things got started with the Churches of God. And uh, we have a, a number of uh, very uh, specific prayer needs uh, in Kenya, and uh, we want to uh, uh, pray about the pastoral training I've already mentioned. Uh, there is a need for financial stability. Uh, most of the people in the churches are day laborers, which means it's hand to mouth. Uh, so they don't have a lot of financial resources to work with, uh, which is why we're involved in children's education and scholarship. Uh, you as a church 
help to provide scholarships. I'm going to uh, be talking more about that in just a minute. Uh, but the kids, the reason we got the scholarship program started, uh, for those of you who don't know, is that uh, uh, probably about 10 years ago, I was on a team and uh, we had basically uh, teenagers from America going, it was called, we call that an ax team. And uh, one of our team members was talking to a Kenyan girl who was uh, in one of the churches. And uh, the Kenyan girl's name was Rosemary. And the American girl's name was Caitlin, I believe. And, and Caitlin was talking to Rosemary, getting to know her. And, and Rosemary asked Caitlin, well, what are you going to do with, uh, you, know, you know, how many kids do you have? And Caitlin said, well, I don't have any kids. I'm still in high school. And, and Rosemary said, well, um, that, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I'm not probably going to go to high school. And, uh, and Caitlin asked Rosemary, well, what are you going to do? And Rosemary said, well, I'll probably be a prostitute because that's, you know, that's what we do. And, and Caitlin brought that back to the team and we were horrified. Can you imagine hearing a daughter or a granddaughter say, well, I'll just go to prostitution as my, as my employment? Who does that? And we realized that with not many educational opportunities, especially for girls, that is the reality. Uh, and that's why trafficking happens so much. And so we came back with a resolution. We're not going to let this happen. If there's anything we can do about it, and the scholarship program was put in place to help especially girls, but boys too, stay in school so that they would have options besides prostitution. Very simple. And so that's one of the reasons why uh, we've been involved with that ministry. And so I'm so thankful for you at NAE being involved and helping provide scholarships uh, to provide a future for these kids. We're also involved in drought and famine relief uh, in Kenya. The climate is such, especially with uh, changing conditions, uh, they're either having floods or they're having droughts. And, and they both produce famine. And so every year we usually provide some funds uh, to help them uh, with getting food to eat. Uh, Pastor Joseph asked me to ask you to be in prayer for a young man named Daniel. He is a, a pastor who is the son of one of our leading pastors who died last year, uh, Pastor Boniface. And Daniel was in a car accident uh, recently and he was badly injured. And uh, they're asking people to be in prayer for him. And of course, new church plants. So these are some of the needs that we have in Kenya. Uh, it's an ongoing uh, uh, field that is really exciting and has opportunities for us to be able to visit. Next year, we're looking to send another AX team, which is not just for kids now, it's also for adults. So anyone's invited to, to go and experience um, a new culture, if you've never been there before, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world and incredible uh, people. So. I encourage you to consider that option. You can find out more on the Church of God website about the Axe teams. And um, I want to share, uh, next picture is a picture of the uh, students, uh, the pastoral uh, students this past January when Arnie Kaufman went to uh, lead the class. Again, this is in conjunction with Weinbrenner Seminary, and it's a great opportunity. So something we can actually provide that they truly need that they don't have locally available. And so we are able to do this and it's a real blessing to, to uh, engage in that. And the next picture is actually the last one. Uh, next to the last. And this is a picture of some of the kids, uh, 10 of the 12 students receiving scholarship assistance. And uh, the first two at the top are brother and sister Shadrach and Lucy uh, Musembi. And their father was Pastor Boniface. So we were helping kids uh, with widowed mothers uh, and and uh, who, who are truly in need. Uh, the group in the middle, <laughs> uh, there are six kids from a church plan called Buffalo Mountain. I love that name. Uh, I, I don't I don't know how to pronounce it in Swahili, so thankfully Pastor Joseph translated it for me. Buffalo Mountain, and I think this is really neat that we're able to step into a church plan and immediately provide help uh, to their kids uh, in, in school. The lower right-hand corner is a pastor's son named Andrew Niaga, and the lower left-hand corner is Anne Mwangi from Kegio, uh, who, where Joseph is pastor, whose mother is a widow. And so right there, you're seeing examples 
of blessing kids uh, whose, uh, whose mothers are widows and uh, in great financial need. This is precisely connected to Psalm 146, where it says that God cares for the widow and the orphan, the people that are so often disregarded and thrown away in this world. But God says, I care. And because God cares, we care. And that's why we do what we do. We're simply here to be a vessel of God's blessing and God's grace to pour out into the lives of people locally and globally, however God opens the doors. So again, I want to thank you as the Nate Church of God for your generosity, your commitment, and serving, the God, serving our God locally and globally. I do want to ask if you have any questions for me. I can uh, have a few minutes. How much time do we have? Oh, hours. Okay, Kelly. <laughs> so we, for years now, have done those, the scholarships. Yes. Um, where, where are they standing financially as far as need? They're, we're able to help these 12 kids. Okay. Um, and the government does provide uh, education for kids through high school. However, they have to come up with the money for books and uniforms and things. That's really where the scholarship funds are going. Mm -hmm. It's to supplement um, the, the uh, educational costs. And we would do more if we had more. Um, Plus, I was wondering how much more of the need is, yeah. is being unfulfilled. Yeah, it, it, Pastor Joseph says that they use everything they get, yeah. and he doesn't really say that they need more. Uh, we have a, an annual budget. Right now, it's we're right on target, so okay. we're okay for that, but we can always use more. Right. If there's more, we'll bless more. So. Well, we're getting ready to, to put together our next year's budget oh. uh, mission. That we're, we're, so okay. just want to know where we... So however you uh, feel that. Yeah. Thank you. So in Mex one more question. In Mex sure. Mexico, then there are only two churches left, the city and Dotu? Yes, okay. at this right. point. Yep. Any other questions? Well, my email address is very simple, and I actually got this wrong a few months ago, and I feel bad about it. btobias at cggc.org. So really simple. Unfortunately, I don't always remember it correct. But that is the right one. btobias at cggc.org. That's the website for the General Conference. You can find out lots of more information about missions and everything else. Uh, but again, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you for your involvement, your partnership, because we are partners together as vessels of God's blessing. And uh, as we have been blessed, so we want to bless others. And the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we have to spend some time together. Thank you for the Nay Church and how you have been at work here uh, and how they have been a blessing locally as well as globally. Uh, it's just a joy to be with brothers and sisters in Christ who love you and who love one another and who love the opportunity to bless. So I pray your ongoing blessing in the midst of their sorrow and their celebrations be glorified. Build them up. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.